Welcome back. All right, going to do a career video now. We're going to talk about Mike Richter of the New York Rangers. And what's interesting is his entire career, he played as a New York Ranger. He was not always New York Rangers property throughout that career, but by the time the next season gets started, he's still a Ranger. So he's a number 28 pick for the New York Rangers in 1985. And there was a lot of hype about him. I was very good at the World Juniors. He was seen as one of the best young goaltenders in the National Hockey before he joined the National Hockey League. And there were there were high hopes and he really lived up to them. Uh, 88 89 he makes his debut in the playoffs for the rangers plays just the one game they lost that game he has an 867 save percentage 89 90 plays 23 games uh 12 5 and 3 record 904 save percentage in the playoffs 3 and 2 record 895 save percentage in six games so now the plan is he's going to be the 1a 1b along with john van beesburg van beesburg an excellent goaltender as well Arguably, Van Beesbrook Richter, one of the greatest uh, tandems of the last 35 to 40 years in the National Hockey League. So his first full year, he's still a rookie, technically, 45 games, 21, 13, and 7 record. The seven ties are eighth overall in the NHL. A 903 save percentage, which is third overall. That's pretty good. In the playoffs, he's two and four with a 923 save percentage in six games. Uh, he was third in Vesna voting that year and fourth in the Calder voting. So um, odd to see him third in the Vesna and fourth in Calder, but we had some pretty good rookie classes uh, in the early 90s. 92 93, or sorry, 91 92 plays 41 games, 23 12 and 2 record, 901 safe percentage, which is sixth overall. In the playoffs, he's 4 and 2 in seven games with an 894 safe percentage, finishes eighth in Vesna voting, and played in the All Star game that year. So he's an all-star. He's still playing roughly half the games. Uh, Van Beesbrook and Richter split the net uh, as well as any goaltending tandem along the same lines as like Varlamov and, and Sorokin now. Uh, and 92-93, what would be the final season of Van Beesbrook and Richter as the tandem? Richter's numbers suffer a bit here in 38 games. He goes 13-19-3, 886 save percentage. He did have injuries throughout his career. He had uh, MCL, ACL, uh, just your standard goaltending injuries that you see. So it's possible that that season he was affected by injury and his numbers would drop off. And in the 93 offseason, the Rangers have a choice to make because they've got expansion coming in. And since they can only protect one goaltender, there's no way that Ben Beesbrook and Richter, that either of them would pass through expansion without being picked. So they end up dealing Van Beesbrook to the Canucks because Richter's the younger of the two and seen as having the more upside of the two. Of course, Rick, Van Beesbrook doesn't stay with the Canucks. The Canucks protected McLean, and they acquired Van Beesburg because they didn't want to lose Whitmore. So they wanted to make it so that there was a more tantalizing option for other teams. And so Florida takes Van Beesburg. The the thinking at the time was that maybe Anaheim would take Whitmore if they had the opportunity to take first. But in the end, what it means is Richter's now the starting goaltender going into the 93-94 season. And the Rangers had a monster year that year, and so did Richter. He played 68 games, which is sixth among goaltenders that year. 42 wins, which is first. To go with 12 losses and six ties. Remarkable win-loss record. His save percentage, 9-10, which is eighth overall. And then in the playoffs, what a run. 23 games, 16-7 and seven is the record. 921 save percentage. So that's your Stanley Cup. That Stanley Cup final between the Rangers and the Canucks isn't just a classic because of the, the comeback by the Canucks and that great Game 7. It's because Richter and McLean were both absolutely fantastic. Both goaltenders, I would argue, at the top of their game, although Richter, coming out of that Stanley Cup final and with the Stanley Cup ring, was seen as arguably the best, the, the best goaltender in the NHL. He was sixth in Vezina voting, though. He never won a Vezina trophy. Uh, and he gets into the All-Star game that year. That 921 save percentage in the playoffs is nothing short of remarkable. Uh, just what a run by Richter. 94-95, lockout shortened season, so fewer games played. 35 games for Richter. 14-17-8 record. The 17 losses are 8th overall in the NHL. An 890 save percentage in the playoffs in 7 games. A 2-5 record, 878 save percentage. The Rangers in 95 tried to recreate the adding guys and, and, and going for it in the playoffs, and it just didn't work. And it started this process where the Rangers were trying to increasingly bring in your high-profile guys, whether it's just rentals or here's the new, the new guy is going to lead us to the promised land, and it's just they would get further away. So it got frustrating for them. 95-96, 41 games played by Richter, 24-13-3 record is 9-12 save percentage, is sixth overall in the NHL. 
In the playoffs, he's 5-6 and six in 11 games with an 883 save percentage. So the Rangers are getting out of the first round. They're still playoffs. They're still in the mix when it comes to contenders. They're just, it feels like each year they're falling further out. 95-96, uh, or 96-97, I should say. 61 games played, which is 10th overall in the NHL. 33 wins, which is 4th overall, to go with 22 losses and 6 ties. 917 save percentage, which is 7th overall in the NHL. So in five of seven seasons, he's top 10 in save percentage. Which, considering how wildly unpredictable uh, goaltenders can be from one year to the next, that's a remarkable number. In 15 playoff games, he goes 9-6 and six with a 932 save percentage. So the Rangers went on a bit of a run that year, uh, not able to get back into the final, but they did go on a nice run. He ends up 5th in Vezina voting that year. So again... What's interesting with him at that point is there's the argument to be made he might be the best goaltender in the world. He doesn't win Vezina trophies, and this is the bonkers reality when it comes to goaltenders and, and Vezina and all that other fine stuff. So 97-98, a very interesting year. 72 games played, which is the most that he played in his career in his first overall in the NHL. 21 wins, 31 losses, which is second overall in the league. Uh, 15 ties, which is first, and a 903 save percentage. June 26th, after that season is done, he is claimed in the expansion draft by the Nashville Predators. So he could have been the first goaltender for the Nashville Predators in the 98-99 season, which would have been fantastic for them in net, right? However, uh, he does not sign with Nashville. July the 15th of 1998, he re-signs as an unrestricted free agent with the New York Rangers. No interest in going anywhere else. So 98-99, he plays 68 games, which is third overall. 27 wins, which is 10th overall. 30 losses, which is third overall in the NHL to go with eight ties. A 9-10 save percentage. So his numbers get a little better. Uh, but again, the Rangers are they're, they're a team in transition at this point. 99-2000, that transition would continue. Play 61 games, 22 wins, 31 losses, which is first overall. Uh, eight ties, which is ninth overall, and a 905 save percentage. He did play in the All-Star game that year. That was his final time in the All-Star game. So we go to the 2000-2001 season. He plays 45 games. Record of 20, 21, and 3 with an 893 save percentage. Again, on in seasons where you see he's played less, you can pretty much guarantee there's been injuries at certain points during this. Pretty banged up. Uh, and, and during an era where that, that can happen with a goaltender, it's known as every era where a goaltender can get banged up. 2001-2002 uh, plays 55 games for the Rangers. 24-26-4 and four record. 906 save percentage. In the offseason, the Rangers did the unthinkable. On June the 30th, just before we go into uh, free agency, they traded his rights to the Edmonton Oilers for a 2003 fourth-round draft pick. Yeah, so the New York Rangers traded the rights to Mike Richter to the Oilers. Uh, however, after that happens, five days later on July the 4th, he's re-signed by the Rangers. So this is something that the NHL kind of frowns on at this point, but back then it wasn't that uncommon to see. Uh, the following season, 2002-2003, after signing that contract, uh, it is a shortened season due to injury. And it's the final season of his career. 13 games, a 5-6-1 record, 897 save percentage. And due to a skull fracture and concussion uh, that season, that would, that would bring his career to a sudden and abrupt end. Mike Richter is a goaltender that it is easy to kind of overlook the stats a bit. 666 games played is 37th among goaltenders all-time in the NHL. 301 wins is 38th all-time. 258 losses is 35th over time. The 73 ties is 66th all time. 904 save percentage. And then in the playoffs, 76 games, 41 33. Uh, 41 and 33 is his record with a 909 save percentage. So the save percentage is better in the playoffs than in the regular season. That's a sign of a good quality goaltender that can really up his game at the time where, where you need that the most. Uh, he is one of those goaltenders that just the Rangers have this remarkable goaltending history where it's just been one star after another, it seems. And Richter's one of those stars. He had silver at the 2002 Olympics. Absolutely fantastic tournament uh, overall, the 2002 Olympics. Uh, he did win gold at the World Cup in 1996, where he's named tournament MVP for the American team. Uh, and, and, well, tournament MVP overall, and he was playing for the American team. He is seen as arguably the best American-born goaltender to ever play in the NHL. Uh, and honestly, in 96, it felt like he was he was the, the top guy. 
And again, that's that's arguably because there was, you know, Patrick Waugh and others. But there's that argument to be made for Richter. He did win bronze at the 1986 World Juniors with Team USA. So Team USA getting a medal there. Uh, might have been a bit of a surprise at the time, but Richter in net will definitely help you with that. And again, the skull fracture slash concussion. And combined with the other injuries he had throughout his career, his career did come to an early end, which is too bad. Uh, he His number was retired by the Rangers on February the 4th of 2004. Uh, because, of course, you're going to retire his number with the Rangers. He got you the Stanley Cup in 1994. If not for that 1994 Cup, we would still hear 1940 chants for the New York Rangers. Uh, and and it would be it would be kind of heartbreaking at this point, wouldn't it? So uh, for, the, for the New York Rangers, uh, Richter really was the guy in net. They made the right choice between him and Van Beesbrook. Uh, he makes it into the U.S. Hockey Hall of Fame in 2008. And it's a fantastic career for, for a goaltender that, because he didn't play as long as some of the others, because he didn't win a bunch of Vesna trophies, might be easy to kind of overlook. I'll throw him in the THG Hall of Fame. I think if he was going to get into the actual Hockey Hall of Fame, uh, he would have gotten there already. And we can make that argument. We could talk about other skaters who've made it into the Hall of Fame who didn't necessarily win awards or play that many games and had to retire due to injuries. And I would say with Richter, if not for injury... He would probably be in the Hall of Fame as well. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through you just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.